three. Hey. <laughs> oh, he, he's, no, no, keep it. Because this, right. is, this is exactly why <laughs> my next guest has actually come with his PR person. Yeah. <laughs> because we're going to have to keep a leash on Zero you. trust, unfortunately. Well, welcome to another See, you're staring at me already. <laughs> 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 Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Golden Nuggets with Sylvia Eldawi. You may have recognized the laugh, but today I am joined by Daniel Hadi, the CEO Middle East of Engel and Volkers. Welcome to the show. Daniel. Thank you very much. <laughs> We're going to try and keep it semi professional. Semi professional. Eliza might get an awkward tap on the shoulder later today. <laughs> get hauled into Hamburg HQ. Exactly. Right. So, just to give some background, some flavor to um, England Volkers, it's actually the oldest agency brand that I've had on the show so far. And you're hmm. actually the youngest CEO that I've had on the show so far. Excellent. <laughs> so, like that. Normally, so, I mean, unfortunately, I think I look the other way around. I think I look you're like the, the oldest. oldest. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And so, it feels like we're one of the youngest here locally. But right, because you've only been there. around. 10 years. This is our 10 year anniversary this year. What, EMV in EMV Dubai? EMV Dubai, 10 years. Oh, yeah, 2014. Okay. But you've only been there for about six months. Six months. It's been a fun six months. Um, I've been in Dubai for well, 14 years, nearly 15 years. Yeah, we're, we're going to we'll go, we're gonna go down. No, no, that's we'll my, go that's down my, uh, one of my downsides. I always jump ahead. I get, I get too excited. We're going to go down memory lane because um, actually when we spoke, we discovered that you and I have got a joint connection. We do. Because I Darwin. started at Town Ends yeah. and you started at Town like, My oh. first ever job in a uh, state agency was at Town Ends, which was... We looked at it when we had it that two, call. You, you were there 2007 to 2010 five, or something. Five, seven, something like that. I think okay. it was 2005, I want to say. I was there. I mean, I'm 10 years older than you. Yeah, but you look 10 years younger. So. That's right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I was there 2002 to 2004. So Townends is like one of the biggest independent agencies in London and Surrey. Yes. You were in the Staines office or Egham I office? I was in the Egham office mm -hmm. doing student letters for Royal Holloway, which was horrific. I won't go in here in Dubai, some of the stories that I've walked in on. Um, and then they moved me to Weybridge, which was amazing, yeah, can lovely. I can I just say like real estate agents in anywhere else, well, in the Middle East, have yeah. no idea what real estate agents in the UK walk into as part of their role. Oh, <laughs> the man. things we've seen, especially those Saturday morning viewings. Yeah, mm. exactly. It's it's horrific. You uh tenant or landlords don't tell tenants we're coming. We yeah. turn up with a key, you walk into all sorts. But yeah, yeah I've got some really funny stories. <laughs> Nearly died actually doing a view in one. No way. Yeah, Explain. we rented a big uh house in a place called Walton, you know Walton Thames. Yeah. It's actually Hersham, which is a little village. And it was this gorgeous house over a field. And we rented it um, to these people. Um, and they turned it into growing uh, marijuana weed. Mm -hmm. And But they hooked the door up. So they got the mains attached to the door handle. So if someone touched it, yeah. you'd have been like like a movie, you'd have been jolted back. Oh, no. And we had suspicious calls uh, from neighbors. Uh, so we had calls from neighbors, suspicious activities. We called the police. Thankfully, yeah. otherwise it, I probably wouldn't be sat here now. Oh no! Um, and they went around there, and yeah, it was uh, they, it was terrible. They cut like big holes in the in the floor to put the pipe in through. Yeah, it it's was a proper operation. Proper proper operation. Uh, but I thankfully, think... I didn't know that's the door, and I'm here <laughs> You're today. You're still here. Yeah. And I think like when you've been in real estate for so long, the stories you can tell. I've had it all: <laughs> fires, dead bodies. Yeah. You know, people decomposing. I'm mean, okay. All right, maybe. It's yeah. Not, send this episode on a <laughs> on a negative <laughs> but yeah you you it is one industry or role where you're going to see all sorts well i think i think moving on to a nicer thing i think you see people at their best as well right mm. they finally afford to buy their new home and being part of that journey is is nice it's a it's yeah. a nice sentiment you see people growing their portfolios and being a big part of that um the difference is in Dubai, you actually benefit from it individually. Whereas mm. in Dubai, in the UK, it's obviously the oldest real estate market. It's yeah. set up for the establishment, for the big guys, right. the companies. Hence why so many of us have taken the plunge and, yeah. uh, and moved over here. But you but were still quite the golden boy at Town Ends, weren't you? I was, and I was definitely a boy. Um, <laughs> yeah, a little bit of flavor. I was in retail, so I left school uh, at GCSEs. Um, Another and dropout. And, <laughs> Do you know what? 
I was very, I've always been very likable. So I was a little bit of a naughty boy, but I was very <laughs> likable. And what, um, what they said was, come back, you can do just uh, your GCSE. So I came back, did them, realized very quickly in that time Wait, off did between- did you get expelled? I didn't get expelled. Okay. That's what I'm saying. I didn't technically get expelled. <laughs> they just asked me not to come back. So Sus there's a, there's a, it's not a suspension. <laughs> they very politely, we agreed amicably that for the better of everyone, I would do an extended study leave. Right. So before my GCSEs, I think I had about four months or five months before I actually sat the exams. And um, I went and worked for that period. And I realized this is so much better. Mm -hmm. I've actually got money, all my, kit, all my mates are at school. And I quickly realized that, that that wasn't my path. Now I'm not here sa saying that's everyone's path. Mm. If you want to be a doctor or a lawyer, <laughs> which we need more of, even down to being a tradesman, bricklayers, mm. electricians, you have to go through that extra education yeah. and it's worth it. For someone like me, um, who can't be told what to do by pretty much anyone, <laughs> um, it, it just wasn't, it wasn't the right path for me. Mm. But that is not a, a, any sort of- Endorsement. Endorsement, yeah. You need to be your own person. Everyone's yeah. an individual. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So I did my GCSEs. I did okay considering mm -hmm. uh, everything, and um, then I went to work at uh, JD Sports, and that's where I met my wife mm -hmm. when I was 16. It was my first day. It was her last day. She went on to work at Thorpe Park, which mm -hmm. when you're 16 is really cool. You yeah. have to queue up for any rides, and you Adventures, get free entry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's a big theme park for theme anyone park, that doesn't know. Yeah. Uh, what it is, and like JD IMG. Sports is, um, JD Sports like is like a Foot Locker, Locker. Yeah. exactly, it's a mm -hmm. Foot Locker. Um, and I left there and went to work for another retail company. I was headhunted to go and run uh, concessions, um, which I loved. And then I worked for Ted Baker in a place called Kingston, which mm -hmm. was great. Um, and they promised me if I hit X target over a Christmas period, mm -hmm. they would give me a uh, cash bonus. I absolutely smashed it and they, they gave me half. And I said, mm -hmm. do you know what? Stubborn Dan, I said, stick it up your ass and, mm -hmm. uh, and let's move on, or your bottom, I should say. Um, and uh, so my friend said, you're really good at sales. Diana's not paying attention. Diana's not, <laughs> oh, I don't know, I think she is. She just gave me the, the look. Um, and my friend said, why don't you come be a, um, a, a, an estate agent? And I was who like, yeah, that? a friend of mine, All a friend right. uh, who actually seen, he's come out and worked for me a couple of times over here. Mm. Um, but he, he said, come and do it, I think you'd be great. Went in, had the interview with Catherine Darbin, who we mm. both know, and she said, I can tell you're gonna be amazing. I was 17 or 18 at this time. They gave me a free BMW, mm -hmm. albeit a one series, mm -hmm. um, and uncapped earnings. You can work as long as you want and, and all of that. And that was sort of my first taste in, in, in well, Real estate. Real estate, yeah. stage, but it was, it's more like entrepreneurial, going out there, you put in the hours, you get mm -hmm. what you get back and, and all the rest of it. Before I was just in, this is your salary, uh, in commissions, mm -hmm. that's what I'm looking for, where we go. Uh, my first sort of taste of flavor in, in commissions. Um, I went there, absolutely loved it, was earning, I was again 18, driving around in a BMW, mm -hmm. earning about three and a half thousand pounds uh, a month, which, which is not a lot of money when you live at home yeah. with your mum. <laughs> And yeah, it was a lot of money. And, uh, but I moved out when I was very young. Me and my best friend got a, uh, got a two bedroom in Weybridge, which was uh, again, cool. Um, and uh, but I quickly realized that was it. I thought this is, this is I was always, yeah, I was, as you said, I was a bit of a golden boy at Townends. I was always sort of top three. Mm. Um, and then they sold me. <laughs> they sold me to a company called Leaders, mm -hmm. who are now one of the biggest. Their uh, leader Romans is is uh, is the group, yeah. and they hated me because at that point they were more like working mums. They were really lovely. I was this cocky little <laughs> brat. Um, so we agreed to part ways. I went to a small company called Aston Mead, who were amazing. Mm. Um, and then I got a call from uh, a, a guy called uh, Asib. And Asib owned Sherwoods. Mm -hmm. Sherwoods. As he oh, told we've heard me, about we'll were one of the biggest. Mm. They were like a uh, better homes mm -hmm. back in the day. They were very, very big. Um, and he gave me the impression they were still that size. They'd come over, I've heard amazing things about you. He's from the same place as me back home. Mm. So I took the plunge, moved over here. How um, old were you then? I was 20, 20. I was about to turn 21. Okay. Um, so still very young. Mm. Um, took the plunge, moved over, and it, was, it wasn't what? I was led to believe it was mm -hmm. in a little office in JLT. I think there's about 10 of us. Mm -hmm. To be fair to them, they used to be one of the big guys. That, a lot of the people that now are, own and run real estate companies Started have gone through Sherwoods. there. Yeah, They've gone yeah. through the Sherwoods uh, uh, training camp. So I left that after about six months, 
swore I'd never work in real estate again and went to work for a private investment bank mm -hmm. in DIFC. Okay. Sounds very sexy. Mm -hmm. See me as a banker walking around <laughs> my little waistcoat. It's a bit of you. Yeah. Uh, I was just on the phone making calls after calls after right. calls. Um, and it, it just wasn't for me. I'm a person who likes to get out and about. Meet people. So I left, uh, mm -hmm. so I was working there and one of the guys I worked with at Sherwoods called me and said, you need to come and work at a company called Espas. Mm -hmm. You know them very well. You know John, I think. John Lyons, yeah. Um, uh, and Pete, back then there was about 20 of us or 25 of us were in a little office in DIP. I said, I'd never work in real estate. I came in, I met Pete. We got on really well. He's mm -hmm. from the same area as me back, um, back home. Um, and a few of the guys I knew, there was a guy called um, Hamilton that was running the International Hamilton Butcher. And all of them sort of said, you've got to get into, um, you've got to come and work here. It's great. I joined Aspas in the end of 2010. Um, the market was horrible. We were getting huge price reductions of like 25% and we still couldn't sell them. Mm -hmm. um, but I sort of carried on and carried on, carried on. And I remember Pete was the MD at the time. He gave me a listing in, in Victory Heights. I managed to sell it and I was like, at this point, I've been through what everyone has, has, has gone through, probably a little bit less so now. I didn't realize how, not lucky they are, because that's, mm -hmm. that's not fair, but it's a, it's a place and time. But when I joined, it was it was tough. Hard, it was yeah. really, really, really tough. Mm -hmm. They were like the, the the dark days when you wouldn't get visas, mm -hmm. not a spas I might add, but you wouldn't get visas. Until and you had to go and do yeah. um, the visa runs to Oman, mm -hmm. like living on beans on toast and mm -hmm. sandwiches for lunch. Um, but it's good. It's what makes you stronger you and, are, and make yeah. you realize how lucky you are or, or fortunate you are now. Um, so, uh, yeah, I joined there and I remember Pete gave me a listen in Victory Heights. And it was like make or break. I, I, I've run out of money. I'm going to have to go home. I was mm. here with my wife. She was working, but not earning a huge wage. And um, I managed to sell it. And I mm. thought, oh, thankfully, I finally, I've got a deal. That just it was changed about, your life. Yeah. It, well, I, I thought he was going to. <laughs> so this was after about being there for about two months. So it's was, it was, it was not a short period. Mm. We didn't do leasing. We just did sales. Um, we were very, we were the first people to start charging uh, fees to sellers. Mm -hmm. And I remember I'd done this deal and I said to the tenant, what's the rent? And they said, it's a hundred. So in the contract, I put a hundred and it turned out it was 95. Mm -hmm. And the buyer, he was like, I'm going to make a case against you. You've mm -hmm. stolen from me. And, and luckily we had, we had a, a great team there and they stepped in and we got it sorted out. I think mm -hmm. we had to give him the, the, give the him extra the five, different, five gave him the five and it, it went away. Ironically, that guy, not with me, because he obviously hated me from that mm -hmm. point because I was so young and junior. <laughs> he went on and bought, I think, 25 properties from a spas. Oh, no. um, so it turned into a good story, just not for <laughs> me. But that gave me enough money to carry on. Um, and then I remember clear as day, I was in Jameer Islands. I was driving a branded, they had, we had these like big Fortuna cars and I was putting my own for sale sign up because it, mm. it was going to be two days. So I went and did it myself. And this car, this uh, uh, Range Rover pulled up, put the window down and he was like, are you a real estate agent? I was like, you know, you're clever, <laughs> aren't you? I'm putting a for sale sign up with my face on it. I've got the biggest branded car you could imagine. I was like, yeah, 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 I am. He said, we, we actually want to buy something. Took him around Jamiro Islands, so I don't like it. He said, we like green. We, we live in like, we want it really luscious and green. So we took, I took them to Arabian Ranches. I showed him a couple of properties. And the next day he was flying out. He said, come and meet me at Alcasa. Mm -hmm. So I went to see him at Alcasa. And I remember I was like, I need, this was like, and he was going to buy one. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm really sorry, Dan. Uh, we're not going to buy one of these villas. And I was mm -hmm. like, Okay, I remember we sat in Alcacer in like the private club. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, no problem whatsoever. When you want to come back, I'll show you around. Mm. Inside, I'm like crying. Mm. And he said, we're going to buy both of them. And I was like, yes. Ah, it's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that was it. That was the, the, the turning point. Uh, I still remember the addresses. One was in Sahil, one's in Savannah, both on the golf course, five bedrooms. I won't say the actual addresses, obviously. <laughs> um, Does he still own them? He owns one of them. I resold the other one for him yeah. uh, uh, later. But but that was it. That was like, I've made that. it moment. I had a good chunk of money. I mean, compared to what people earn today, it's probably not a lot. I think I earned about 170,000 myself mm. from them two transactions, which is still a lot of money. Yeah. Um, but certainly compared to the crazy figures are getting flown around today. Yeah. Uh, but people back then, you just weren't doing a million dirhams yeah. a month. It just wasn't that that market, Dubai wasn't that place. And but, how, how competitive was it at that time? Do you know what? It, it's, it's not as competitive it was now. What, mm. what I love about the industry is I come from British estate agency mm. where the standards are like super, super high and it wasn't like that here. And over time, the standards have been picked up and more companies have come. You had so many new companies open up and 
and and set the standards along with the older and the bigger guys as well. So it wasn't as competitive, mm. but the market was just so, so small, um, so much smaller. Um, and it's, yeah, so it's, it's, it's a weird one. It's like the market is more competitive now, but the market is a lot bigger. Yeah, so true, it, true. it's quite similar is what I would say. But that was the turning point. And then from, I think after about 18 months, I became um, a, a manager. And then after that, I became a director and I was running the SPAS for, mm -hmm. for a period. Me and one other guy under Pete and, and, and the other owners joined John joined us and he was actually part of my team and mm. we, we worked together for a long time and he's a good guy along with all the other guys, uh, a lot of the senior guys that are still there. Um, and then I was presented with the opportunity in 2000 and the end of 2013 to set up my own real estate company, mm -hmm. um, which, uh, which, which I thought I'm going to do it. I thought I'd be brave. I've always wanted to own my own company. Mm. Now's the time to do it. Um, it's 2014 was quite a big year. I got married in April, 2014 and Ascot & Co started in 2014. Mm. Um, and then I run it for about five years, some highs, a lot more lows. Um, fun fact, uh, I started, as I said, in April, 2014, and then the market did not stop falling until I sold it in April, 2019 oh, no. to Better Homes. Timing. And since then it's done nothing but go up. So never, never open a real estate company with me. My timing's terrible. <laughs> Um, but I think you, I think you learn more about yourself in, in them periods. Like I said, there was some amazing times. We, we, we dominated certain areas, very few, but the ones we chose to be in. Um, and yeah, it was a, it was a great, great learning curve. So you believe in niching down or niching down as they call it? Ah, do you know what? I think it's difficult now to set up your own real estate company. People always say, why wouldn't I do it again? I'm, I've obviously been in the market for the best part of 15 years. Yeah. I think. I think we'll come on to it. I think what I want to achieve in life is 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 my whole life. I moved in when I was twenty. Mm. I've got an amazing reputation. I'm I'm extremely good at what I do in a very small country, the UAE, in a very small city, which mm. is Dubai, in a very small industry, which is Dubai real estate. Yeah. Um, and what I'm doing now is still very much Dubai real estate, but my mm. title is Middle East, as you yeah. pointed out at the beginning. And it is a quarter of a of a step out. Like I'm being exposed to stuff on a much more global level. Global, yeah. I have a meeting every month. You've got the CEO of Americas who look mm -hmm. after Canada, America, South America, all the little islands around it. You get exposed to, to Spain and Portugal and France and obviously Germany where we are so, so dominant. It's mm -hmm. like the equivalent of being email, like literally every single person mm -hmm. in every single town, in every single village, on every high street, you'll see an England Volkers. It's, yeah. it's the brand is just synonymous with yeah, real estate exactly yeah. exactly synonymous with with trust uh, and everything else in between it integrity getting the job done it's 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 crazy i, I think i told you before quite a funny story i went mm. i had to go to hamburg to head office recently um and lufthansa were on strike so within two minutes literally i'm walking out the door of the airport there's not a soul there and the guy the plane closed customs officer comes over and he says what's your uh come with me puts my little suitcase my my that took on the the, the plane yeah. sits down and he starts undoing it. And he says, uh, he says, why are you here? I said, oh, business. Mm. He said, what do you do? I said, I'm the CEO of Engel and Volkers. And he went, Engel and Volkers? I went, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he went, no, 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 you can go. It's fine. That's fine. That's we know you guys. Go you can go. Yeah. So that, like, that's he the level of how big Haddy. they are. Hmm. Yeah. Arab. Abdul Hadi. <laughs> He's up to something dodgy. <laughs> to something. Bring, in, bring him in just to check. But no, I've got away with it. So yeah, a little fun story. But um but yeah, so that that was sort of my career. I run Ascot for for a period. Then I was acquired by Rick and Ryan. I know you've got a yeah, we've got we're all sliding doors. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. a horrible little industry we've chosen to work <laughs> in. Um, and yeah, from there, I I worked at I was they bought the Ascot and Co. The deal was I'd come aboard for two years. Mm -hmm. um, I ended up staying for the best part of five years. Yeah. I loved it. They're still so yeah. I guess that's what well the. And I've had another guest who had that same path, Sherwoods, yeah, and then. I saw. Um, uh, what's Espas. it called? Espas, and then set up their own. Yeah, I would say I would say we're very similar. I'd say Asco was slightly bigger and more successful than Allsop and Allsop, but <laughs> oh, uh, maybe fine. that was no, no. I'm joking. <laughs> Lewis is a friend. Uh, I've also got a boat in the marina, but I don't go out much because it takes so long to like blow it up to get it out there. <laughs> <laughs> but do you put it on Instagram? That's the question. Would you put it on Instagram? Do you know what? Uh, completely unrelated to this, I actually got my captain's license about a year, about six months ago. Uh -huh. um, and I, as I was doing the course, I realised I really don't like the sea. It scares me. <laughs> so it's the biggest waste of money. 
Um, but yeah, I uh, if you do see me on a boat, just full disclosure, ever on my Instagram, it's an ex exclusive yachts boat. It's not mine. I don't <laughs> own it. I've got no interest of owning a boat. Um, but yeah, so but it is weird. I didn't. I never realised we had the same path. So it was Sherwood's, uh, and then it was a Spass, or it was Parkvale, but still a Spass. And then we set up our own company. So it was a bit of a weird one. Obviously, Allsop and Allsop have gone strength to yeah. strength. Got a lot of respect for the and guys. And you sold out. You sold out. I, well, you could argue I'm like, so I managed to sell my company. They haven't, but mm. we won't go into <laughs> we won't go into that. Um, but no, Lewis is a good friend. Carl's a good friend. I was going to ask, why didn't you have Carl on? Was Carl too busy? To come on, you had to settle for Lewis, is that <laughs> what it was? Mark, who is the MD, is also a very good friend of mine. So I've got nothing but, but amazing things to say about them guys. They're extremely successful. And isn't it lovely? Like I'm I'm discovering all these connections and the, the history. It's a, well, do you know someone what? Someone should make a movie Everyone has these it. things online. We're actually all friends. Like, yeah. We all get on well. We have common interests. Some of us are more controversial than than, than others. Mm -hmm. Some of us, we all completely some them, agree. Some we them. don't like them uh, as a unit. There's certain people we don't like. But, and some but people have to speaking, come along with their PR people. And some of us, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. On a leash. I think I've been pretty well behaved to now. You have so yeah, far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To now. We've still got time. We haven't got to the question <laughs> section yet. That's where that's, that's where the uh, that could, that that's where it all comes turn. unstuck. But yeah, so I sold to so I started Ascot and then yeah. I sold it to Better Homes. And you stuck around because typically you hang you, you're supposed to be there for a year, two years contractually 100%. for the handover. Yeah. But you overstayed. Yeah, I was I think it was two years we agreed. Uh, me and my partner, uh, me and my business partner, mm. uh, we, we both stayed for two years. He then went on to be one of the manager directors at, at Sotheby's, where he still is now, doing incredibly who's well. That? Ben Keith. Okay. Um, you have, you have, I think Chris you have three Whitehead, or four. You have Chris Whitehead, who's yeah. the. I don't, I don't understand these stupid titles. They mean mm -hmm. zero to me. But I think he's the CEO, and they've got four or five manager directors. He's mm -hmm. one of them, uh, but he's a very good friend, mm -hmm. and he's doing incredibly well. I'm very proud of him. And then um, I decided to stay. I loved working uh, with Ryan. I tolerated working with Rick, <laughs> who is one of my closest friends. It was uh, actually so the opener that. for the season. Episode. Was he? Yeah, yeah. Episode 13. Yeah, I, I think you tried to get me, but we said, sorry, not, not her. <laughs> He's not you. a camera you had to, person. You had to set, he, yeah. <laughs> He's got a face for radio. Me? Rick, you're talking about, surely. <laughs> no, I'm talking about, I'm sexy. <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> uh no uh so yeah I, I i thoroughly enjoyed it working with linda and ryan was amazing i've got nothing but the, the best thing to say they're still good mm. friends uh and now rick's one of my closest friends as well i've connected with the with my uh new and improved replacement as rick likes to say louis is a good guy Louis Harding, yeah. um again no they're, they're good i just i like giving them shit yeah. basically so i'm sure again you'll and, ask me some specific questions later so you got headhunted for this role i did so i get calls all the time mm. and it was it, it was such weird sliding doors like i think everything happens for a reason i'm not i'm not particularly spiritual but i do think Calm trust in the system mm -hmm. things always happen for a reason yeah. um and i remember i got a, a linkedin message and i was going to the gym and they said, we need to speak to you. I've been trying to get hold of me for ages. And I've just sort of ignored them, ignored them, ignored them. I'm terrible on social media. Mm -hmm. I don't ever check anything. Mm -hmm. I hated LinkedIn because what I realized, it was a direct complaints department. <laughs> for Better Homes, we are, we were, sorry, they are, not we. There we go. <laughs> uh, but that's what whenever I go somewhere, I treat it like it's my own yeah. business. They have the largest property management portfolio. And I know the feeling. And the, the messages yeah. I'd get on LinkedIn from a I've studio. A yeah. The AC's not. And I, because mm. I was managing directors, so they would come to me. So I just, just used to just put my head in the sand and avoid mm. it, basically. I just, I hate social media at the best of times. So mm. I'm getting better. You've only, again, only just reacted. She oh, she's moved. <laughs> she's moved. She's moved. She's coming I'm getting closer. better. <laughs> I've just reactivated uh, Instagram. my Instagram. Yes. LinkedIn, I'm getting better at. Step by step, I'm getting getting cajoled into doing more and more and more. But um, yeah, so I just downloaded it. I reposted your your you put a Q and A up. Yeah. Any questions? I'm going to apologise. We've got in some Q and A. Yeah, I apologise. My friends Q's. are uh, scumbags, <laughs> and I'm sure you got some horrific messages. We'll, so I apologise. We'll that house. We'll, yeah, we'll come back to that in a bit. But I ended up staying at Better Homes for for the best part of five years. I loved it, and then sorry, we moved on from that. So I got the call. I said, I can only speak between 6 and 6.30, uh, just to be difficult. So I had zero interest yeah. in, in moving. They called me, to be fair to them. Uh, the, the Singapore office called me because that was just the time zone. Mm. They said, look, we want to speak to you. Um, I'm, so I'm not interested, I'm not interested, I'm not interested. Had a second call with, with the guy from London who told me a little bit more about the role. 
I didn't realize mm. how big they were until I accepted and I took the summer off and I went to the head office yeah. in Hamburg and I got that real um, imposter syndrome, which people will be shocked at. Cause I know I look like the most confident person <laughs> in the world, but trust me, even the best of us have that little feeling. It's a good, uh, it's a good feeling to have. Mm. And I walked up and it was a, it's a, they've got their own office building on an island in Hamburg, it's like seven floors. Mm. And I was like, oh, I am not qualified for this role. <laughs> I'm really yeah. not qualified mm. for this. Um, and I went in there and I was meeting the, all these people that, I mean, they are, they are so, so, so big. Like I was in America uh, uh, a couple of, well, about six weeks ago. And I was talking about the Middle East and Dubai uh, more specifically and why so much investment is coming from America and Canada. And I was speaking to 2000 agents. Mm. Like that's new for me. I'm on a yeah. stage, it's a production. Like this is a production, but yeah. that was like a whole nother level. Thousands of people. Um, but it was great and I loved it. And I, and I think I went down relatively well. Again, mm. I got a slight tap on the, on the quite slap on the wrist for a couple of things I said <laughs> there. Say. <laughs> yeah, shock horror. Um, but, but I loved it. And, and yeah, it's, it, it, I just cannot, it, it's crazy. Like this month alone, we just sold a, a, a four million pound house in London via the private office. Mm. We're about to, we just give a, a five million euro lead to Mallorca, which is hopefully uh T uh, closing as well, mm. like it's just a, it's just a complete different level. What Better is, homes were the private, biggest and the oldest. What's this private office? Private yeah. office mm. is is basically although they fall under me, it's a it's a global team. Right. So um, the head office for private office is London. Uh, sorry, is actually New York, mm. and my head office for Amir is 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 in London. Um, it's the elite of the elite. Elite. Right. You want to sell your vineyard in uh in california mm. it's the private office right. you want to buy we sold the most expensive apartment in manhattan is that right so the private office sold the most expensive apartment ever mm -hmm. and that again was a collaboration so to put it in perspective i think the largest real estate company here is 700 brokers mm -hmm. we're seventeen thousand, mm -hmm. uh, or over seventeen thousand. of that seventeen thousand, only 200 250 a part of the private office. Right. So they, these guys work together. So you want to buy a property in Dubai, mm -hmm. you have that same level of service everywhere. We don't advertise it particularly heavily because it is for It's like, private. if you know, you know. It's well for, exactly. Yeah. It's like the American Express Centurion. You don't know why you want it, but you sort of yeah. do. Um, but it's been, a, it's been a great recruitment tool. Like I've taken some of big agents from the more renowned luxury brokers where we're, we're eating into the market share. We mm -hmm. take it from Sotheby's. Um, I've taken, yeah, like from a recruitment perspective, People are calling me and saying, I want to be part of this. Yeah. And it's like, I'm sorry, guys, you're just not, it's not just about income. Mm -hmm. Like there's a minimum you have to Standards, build. Yeah, yeah. Look, minimum standard in terms of financials. There is a, a minimum uh, performance, performance but it's, it's not, it goes way and above that. You mm -hmm. really have to be that ambassador of what Engel Volker's private office mm -hmm. Uh, uh, stands for. You look at our, our founder, Christian Volkers, I actually had the pleasure of meeting him in Hamburg uh, mm. recently and he's a, he's a multi-millionaire polo player. Like that is, that is what we are. We are just yeah. a little bit more, I mean, the, je ne sais quoi, je can ne I say that? What's that? Am I going to get in trouble for that? German? Je ne sais, <laughs> how do you say that in German? How do you say? Je ne sais quoi. Je ne sais quoi in German. Like, oh, uh, we I don't We've know We've got what. a fake German. We've got a Lebanese German that's... <laughs> ich weiß nicht. Ich weiß nicht. Is that good? <laughs> like, that I good? don't know what, you know. Je ne sais quoi is like, I don't know what, you know. Just, yeah, you know. va va voom. See, it doesn't have that same, it's yeah. not the We're, same. It's just, it's, just a, it's just a different level, yeah. <laughs> Let's just leave it there before mm. we get into. Because anyway, EMV is a premium brand. It's a premium entry, brand. It's, entry level is premium brand. Entry, so the private yeah. office is like Ultra. next level. You'll never know the names of these. You don't owners. know the names, and, and that's why it's private. Mm. Wealth whispers, right? Mm. People when of, he shouts, of, wealth whispers. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Here we go. You've got the full <laughs> saying. Um, but yeah, it's just it, these guys don't want to be well known. They just get discreetly passed around between between London and, and New York mm. and, and Miami and Dubai and everywhere else in between. Mm. Um, but look, this is my first sort of venture. In, this is my first real job was Better Homes. Mm -hmm. Before that, I had my own business. I was a real estate broker. This. Yeah. And I remember there's, there's so many weird things Like I said to Rick, like, I'm going to go on holiday here. Mm. He went, no worries, just you need to fill it into the CR, uh, yeah. whatever, the HR holiday system. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, what? Yeah. Are you mental? <laughs> what am I, a child? <laughs> I have to fill in a holiday request form for you to accept it. I was like, fuck I'm off, telling you, I'm, I'm telling you, yeah. <laughs> uh, but that was my first job. And, and Rick was amazing in that sense that he, he gave me a lot of room mm -hmm. to do what I wanted to do. And I think hopefully I left a, a good 
lasting impression on, on everyone there. Um, but he was educating me on how maybe things are done in a more proper institutional proper way. way. Which um, lined you up perfectly. Which lined up perfectly. Yeah. And I remember his partner by said, you're going to do amazing at England Vote. Actually, I think it was even Ryan, Rick or Ryan, I forget. Just don't be yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so reassuring <laughs> no but they said they said look you you come a long way yeah. uh, you've probably grown up a bit i'm not i'm not afraid to, to admit and don't go backwards only go forwards was, yeah. was the advice which was good advice like it is different when i do a presentation it'd be like i sit with ryan and, and and rick and and a couple of the board members and we'd talk about the plans and it was it was it was pressure and it was good yeah. like now i'm doing it to like a five billion euro yeah. company that's yeah. owned by a hundred billion euro <laughs> private exit. It's just, it's that like a different have, level. That must have like, done wonders for your imposter syndrome. <laughs> it's, I still get a little bit nervous. Like when yeah. I, I remember when I was getting up on the stage in, in, in Vegas, and, and, and you are, let's just kind of, you know, for those who don't know who your brother is, he's yes. the complete opposite. He's, he loves it. He thrives on it. Dom. Dom, Dom Hardy. Very proud of Dom. He's moved over he, here to work at Better Homes for a period. And yeah. he, he left and, and he's gone from strength to strength. And he's the guy behind, or one of the guys behind Only Comms, yeah, Only the, Sports. They've got their big event tonight at the Burj Khalifa. I, he, I think I know where the, the next event stuff, is. Isn't it? Yeah. yeah, so it's like company versus company. But they've mm. gone beyond that. They've set up like... The Dubai Amateur Boxing Association, Federation I think it is, or okay. something like that. Mm. I was at their event last um, last week where Dom was actually boxing on. Uh, and again, I, I, I try and build this perception that I'm this well put together <laughs> professional person. And unfortunately, Brotherly Love came <laughs> out and those that there would know what happened. But oh. it's uh, nothing bad, nothing bad. Mm. But you can't help who you are. And yeah. I got a bit over over enthusiastic so um, he's very much kind of out there he and is. you've always been behind the scenes i am mm. uh yeah lay low mm -hmm. whisper i don't like people knowing what i'm up to i like to work in the shadows and, mm -hmm. and, and and surprise people but unfortunately again we we and diana who sat over there we laugh about it all the time the biggest issue we've got with my uh reintegration to to the social world social media world <laughs> is i have spent the last five years absolutely taking the complete piss out of everyone doing posts <laughs> and so the cup afterwards i deserve <laughs> if when i start so i re-downloaded instagram i reshared your story and i think i put one story on there since and yeah. i just now i'm sort of gone away i'm better on linkedin i'm getting my, my stuff out there yeah. um but i need to i really want what i want everyone in dubai and and, and beyond to see what we're doing at England because yeah. it's it's amazing like this year alone we went to, I was in Thailand. I took my 20 top performers. We had a great blast. Mm -hmm. What happens in Thailand stays in, in Thailand. Thailand. <laughs> uh, we, 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 we all cut ourselves and had a handshake. We would never discuss what, what happened there. Um, and then I actually went on a family holiday skiing where there was no snow. Mm -hmm. It was hotter where I went than it was in Dubai that right. week, which was fun. Uh, and then I got back. I was in Hamburg and I was in a couple of our offices. Then I was in London. I had meetings there in our, in our private office. Then I was in Mauritius on a family holiday. Mm -hmm. It rained the whole time, but we, God, we're your there. your timing's terrible. Yeah. Don't go on holiday with me mm -hmm. this year. Mm -hmm. I, look, I don't want to talk about rain too much with, yeah. with what happened last week. But, and I've got an amazing life and I'm very, very fortunate. But I went skiing with, and there was no snow. And then I went to, to Mauritius and I actually saw Rick. Mm -hmm. We had a really fun day out in the worst rain I think I've ever experienced mm -hmm. bar that one day last week. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, it, for, for, for the entire time but we're there so we're on this tiny little island mm. uh and i go and i was actually going to put the photo up last week but i think it wasn't uh wasn't appropriate with everything that's going on mm. but i went and met the guys there and it, again we're on this tiny little island in the middle of nowhere and england and volkers is, is there and it's, mm. it's it's incredible i'm about to go off to barcelona and and, and see uh, some of our people there and, and meet them again as i've said mm. i like it's just going back to how this whole thing sort of side mm. walking into this england and volkers castle HQ, and it's just like yeah. jesus i'm what a boy from here? stains mm. ali g world <laughs> and now I'm, I'm i'm this thing but do you know what when you get back you realize um you're as good as all them yeah. like it, you're 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 you just need to have that belief and that confidence yeah. in what you want to do and if you do that and you're good at what you do you'll 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 thrive in any industry not just mm. by real estate yeah no no that's such i love this story and it is 
I think everyone gets that feeling of imposter syndrome. Even yeah. me, I'm like, you know, I've just kind of turned into a TV show. So I'm just like, mm, <laughs> Oprah Winfrey. That's the that's the target. As yeah. long as you've got a mentor or someone to kind of, you know, set your sights I've got, on. Do you know what? I've got that. That's that's the other thing. I learned a lot from from Rick, Ryan, and Linda. Mm. Um, I learned a lot from my business partner Ben. Uh, before that, I learned a lot from my wife, who's also my old business partner in that in that business. But I remember I went to Mallorca to a private office event and they had all the different CEOs up on the, on the mm. stage and I'm sat on the very end and you've got the CEO of America. He's been in the industry. He's a legend. Everyone mm. knows him. He's got thousands, hundreds of thousands of followers. Mm. Like he's, he, he, he does professional talking for a living. Like mm. you've got him up there. You've got the CEO of, of Iberia. And again, he's been in Anglo Volkers for 10 years. He's a, you've got all these huge guys, mm. private office heads. And then you've got a little old me on the end. <laughs> And it was a small event. Again, it's just a private office, about 200 of us. And we were given an update on our market. And we had the microphone, it was getting passed down. And I was the last one. Mm. And I remember I was so nervous. Again, I think the people, my, my guy sort of knew, could tell us, I just go distant, I sort of just don't really talk. And I was yeah. really nervous. Um, and it might come to me and I thought, oh, I, I, I don't do any prayer. Like for this, for example, I've done yeah. zero prep. We had a call. Yeah. I'm better just rolling with the punches. Yeah. Um, and there might come to me, and obviously most real estate markets in the world at the moment are going through a really tough period, mm. a decline. And they're talking about, we think it's going to be better and da da da. And it comes to me, I went, you lot are fucking miserable. <laughs> like, it's like, we're having a great time in Dubai. It's amazing. The sun's shining. We're, we're breaking records and da da da. And, and the whole like, room. Ice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the whole room burst in laughter, including mm. my, my uh, these guys. And, and they were like, just be yourself. Like yeah. people like that rawness, that realness. I am mm. who I am. I'm mm. never going to change. Yeah. I've learned to probably temper down uh, uh, a little a bit. A little bit, yeah. Um, but yeah, and it, it, it was success. And after that, everyone wanted to come and speak to the Dubai lot. And they're like, mm. you guys are crazy. And I, we had like this little plan. It's like, we're Dubai. No one here is buying a drink at the after party. Mm -hmm. We're buying everything. Mm -hmm. Get in anyone's faces. They've got to do shots. They've got, we've got to just make an impression. <laughs> And honestly, you speak to Diana, we, we did the same in Vegas. We uh, went to LA, went to Beverly Hills, uh, met the, the team there, and then I went to Vegas. And uh, we had calls after, and Diana's like, what did you guys do in Vegas? Mm. Everyone is talking about you. And I think it, 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 that's what we are, Dubai. We yeah. are the new kids on the block, yeah. not just Angela Vogels, but Dubai as a whole. And we're here to disrupt. And, and we went there, and we made a, made a lasting impression. So, definitely put but I've got my guys there that, that, that have been in the, the company and industry a lot longer than I have, and they are telling me where to, to temper down a little bit and where I can be myself. So I've been very lucky. I've had a lot of people guide me through, uh, mm. through life. But you have, that is something that is super important that you are staying true to yourself. Yeah. You can't be anybody else. Yeah. And I, I would encourage you to get back on social media and be me. you. <laughs> it's not a comeback. Like, I think you have to be there to begin with. I think mm. you go, I'm like an old grandma. You go through my Instagram on the, 10 or 20 pictures I have up. I think it's my kids and Well, first dogs. of all, your profile's closed. So oh, is it? Yeah, so you have to be a friend to see your stuff. Ah. Uh, so as a CEO in Middle East, yeah. you're going to need to open up your profile, be visible, oh, gosh. have some aspirational um, Put posts, a quote of the day up. educational. <laughs> Just so find you, it. Oh. You mentioned that you took the piss out of people for yes. about five years. Yes. What was it about what you were seeing that was being put out there that made you cringe? Um, I think I'm just a private person. Mm -hmm. I don't, I've had a quite a untraditional upbringing um, in a business sense, less so in a family sense, but in a business sense. And the people that have been mentors to me, they've always said, loose lips sink ships. <laughs> and I think Secrecy and not secrecy, sorry, just quietness. Privacy. Just go about your mm -hmm. privacy, discretion. discretion. Mm -hmm. Just go about your business, work in mm -hmm. the background, and then surprise everyone. And I think that's me. And I just, I just, I think there's certain people that have done training and they've said, everyone download and everyone's got to do this. Mm. But then you've got everyone just saying the same things over yeah. and over again. Like, I see people, I saw a video the other day of someone, and I know firsthand, like, they were working in like a bar, like mm. in a pub, which is nothing wrong with that, by the way. There's mm. zero, I'm not, not slandering that. But mm. 12 months ago, and now they're professing how to be this amazing genius. Guru, it's like, yeah, mate, yeah. shut up. Yeah. No one cares. And yeah. I just, there's so much out there that 
thankfully is is waffle and i think yeah. it's great you're doing this and you're getting key people on mm. because you do need to listen to the two percent yeah like i've been there i've done that i've had beans on toast i've had to skip rent payment like mm. i have been where people are i've started from the ground from the mud and the stones mm. and i've come up from there mm -hmm. so can i offer valuable advice yeah i think i can offer the one yeah. or two things i've made huge mistakes again i can tell you the mistakes i'm mm. a very open book i think you said that mm. what what I think why people tend to warm to me is I'm good or bad. I'm a very open person. Yeah. Like I can teach you from my failures and I can teach you where I've done, I've done right. And mm. like that offers value. But even still, I'm only 35. You yeah. still, I've still got so much to learn and I'm still learning. And that's mm. what I love about Angular Volkers is that I'm learning again. And I just think there's so many people on there and I just it just makes me cringe, to mm -hmm. be honest with you. And that um, is like, okay, so the... No offense to everyone, I just completely slated again. <laughs> so feel free to come back at me, slander me, do whatever you want. I don't but care. what is because everyone's kind of doing the same thing, or they're not really their genuine self, or they're not really adding value. Yeah. But I just uh, to me, I think uh, one thing that I've noticed is the obsession with numbers and metrics, like how many followers, how many, you know, or like I just made seven figures, six figures, and you yeah. know, I'm here happy with my three figure subscribers on YouTube. Like that yeah. is, is 400 people yeah. on YouTube yeah. subscribed so far. But no, seven figures, six figures. I think it's so tacky. Why did you do that in American accent? Because <laughs> my the way my algorithm's set up, yeah, yeah, I see yeah. all of these kind of. Um, and I need to do something because my algorithm keeps showing me these social media, um, like, oh, I get to seven figures, it was seven figures and, you know, leisurely and everyone's mm. pushing for how to not work a day in your life, but bank seven figures. <sighs> <laughs> and that is probably part of the allure of real estate. It's how to, and we know this, without having a proper education, mm finishing uni or going to or finishing university um you can make a lot of money in this industry yeah, look, the, the 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 probably the most uneducated industry in the world like yeah. if you don't get your education you're limited somewhat in what you can do mm. um recruitment is another one ifas but you obviously mm. have to get your degrees and, and to go further but real estate is is good what what's nice about real estate is you're selling tangible assets yeah you're not selling stocks and bonds i'm a real estate guy through and through mm. i should have a probably a slightly better or bigger exposure to, yeah. to the stock market um but i just i love property and i mm. like that i can touch it and it's mm. there and i know i know it in and out mm. um i just want to be super super clear like for all of the waffle and the bs i'm learning to not swear <laughs> uh that you Great see online effort, BS. Yeah. it's 20% of it is true, mm. genuinely. And, yeah. and that's the issue you have. Like, I probably go too far the other way. When mm. I sit with people, go, I want to come mm. and work in Dubai. It looks amazing. Mm. Yeah, anything look amazing. Mm. Like anything can be glamorized. I honestly think still to this day, it, I would say it's still 50%. People come here, think it's a holiday, think they can post things, mm. you're gonna make loads of money. It's not that. Yeah. You will work harder than you have ever worked in your life. Mm. Like you work off your mobile. Mm. You get a call at 10 o'clock from buyer, guess what? You're yeah. taking it. Yeah. You need to get up and do a viewing in the morning. Mm. Guess what? You're there. Like this is in the is, UK, you'd never have done that. You'd have looked no, at the exactly. phone at seven o'clock. You'd be like, I'm I remember. That. Like you yeah. wouldn't be allowed to give out mobile numbers. Mm. They would call and they. I don't know if it's still the same. I've been here 15 yeah. years, but you weren't allowed to give out mobile numbers. Mm. It was like a breach on your privacy and mm -hmm. like your alone times, your alone yeah. time, and mental health and yeah. wellness. <laughs> Like Dubai is not like that. And I think mm. why Dubai is such a special place is everyone that's got that entrepreneurial streak yeah. that doesn't care about working 12 hour days that wants to just do mm. something with their lives. Yeah. This is the place to do it because it allows it. Mm. But you can't get there without the hard work. Yeah. And, like, and, and that's what it like. A, you, when you think about any expat, they've left everything, their family, maybe, you know, everything they've known, their history to come here to make something of themselves. So yeah. you're just by being here, you're surrounded by a bunch of other people that have exactly the same mindset yeah. as you, success mindset. Yeah. So that alone is like such great energy. Yeah. Inspirational. Exactly. But it is hard work. Exactly. Mm. Like Yeah, you're going to ask me at some point what's my top tip? And I'll, 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 I'll skip ahead to it right now as we're on the subject. <laughs> top tip for who? Top tip for brokers. Okay. For yeah. people that want to get in the industry. We don't just want one, we want multiple. We'll give you multiple, oh, but right. I'll, I'll just say one now. Hard work beats talent mm -hmm. every single day of the week. Mm -hmm. Like the, the, the best brokers, they may look, the best analogy I ever heard 
from my cheesy sales director at the time mm. was you have to be a swan. Mm -hmm. You need to glide around effortlessly. Like anyone that sees you, you're having the time of your life. Mm -hmm. You could be on social media at Sushi Samba or, or at Verde or wherever. Like, that's what they see. Mm -hmm. But under that water, you are going crazy. Yeah. You are working harder than you ever worked. Mm -hmm. And that's what big agents are. They see people online mm -hmm. that, that have this persona and yet they have a good life. If you've been here for 15 years grafting, mm. you can have that benefit because you do have your client database, but that's not what it's like. It's going to yeah. take a long time to get there. Mm -hmm. You're going to be driving around uh, uh, in horrible weather, mm -hmm. in a little crappy rental car, mm. and you're, you're going to be grafting. And if you're and not prepared to do time, that, yeah. wasting a lot of time, mm. you're not prepared to do that, don't, don't bother, bother coming. Yeah. Genuinely, you're, it's not order taking. It's, mm. it's, it's extremely hard work. Mm. And I think it's important that people realize that before they up and leave everything behind, as you mm, said, mm. they need to realize it's not easy. Mm. It's really, really not. Um, and I see it time and time again. People get hit with the t first bit of adversity. Oh. And they're off. And they're off. And yeah, you were exactly. nearly off. Had and you I was not, nearly yeah. off. Like, mm. I, I, but resilience is, is, is key. Like, mm. you have to be resilient. And, and it's, not a, it's not a walk in the park. Yeah. And there are some industries that, or there are some roles that do gradually tend to lead in. So your, your retail background yeah. before Townlands, I had a retail background. So I think a lot of retail people are good to transition into real estate. Mm. I noticed as well, when I became a director in the UK, I noticed that teachers made fantastic real estate agents. Really? I'll tell you why, because they're used to explaining things mm. very easily and, and you know calmly to people, which is what the role of a real estate agent should be, to explain yeah. things. Are there any other industries or roles where you've hired people and you're like, that's a good... Um, cabin crew after yeah. COVID. Oh, yeah, of course, that was... Yeah. Uh, they, they, the cabin some crew was, have smashed it. Can we, just, can we just stop and talk about... Yeah. yeah. So cab, a lot of cabin crew after the C word, because yeah. YouTube doesn't like it, um, transitioned into real estate. Yeah, and I'm gonna make a joke there about the C word, but I'm so glad this is where I'm learning. <laughs> I'm learning tongue, to be better. Hold your tongue. <laughs> and actually, what what made them so successful is because their customer service bang is on. bang on. Hundred percent. And it is. I mean, look. Off plan is sales. Like that is proper getting in there, selling, but it's still identifying people's wants and needs and then mm -hmm. and then matching them. It is customer service. Mm -hmm. You're not selling this fictitious stock that is sort mm -hmm. of up here. It's, yeah. it's a genuine asset. Mm -hmm. People don't like to be sold to. Yeah. And and what we teach is you don't it's not you don't sell directly, it's indirectly. Mm -hmm. It's it's when you're having that phone call with someone, they go, I would love to have a room downstairs as a mm. second room for the kids' toys, mm. like it's a bit of a nursery. Mm. And you remember that. That's what being a good salesman about. Mm. I'm not selling, but when I'm doing that viewing yeah. and we go around and go, this space here would be amazing for like a nursery or mm. a second office or whatever it is. Yeah. They won't remember having that conversation with you and they'd be like, mm. that would be amazing. Yeah. I'd you're love that. That's da -da -da. And it's me. just, mm. it's, it's requirements to requirements. Mm. Every different agency has a different, you have your hot buttons or requirements, mm. whatever it is but it's identifying people's wants, mm -hmm. people's needs, and then what can they afford and trying to get the best for them. Yeah. And if you can do that and give good customer service, be mm -hmm. polite, turn up when you're meant to turn up, be professional. I'm not saying call people sir, man. In fact, I hate it. I tell yeah. people don't ever call people that. You, mm -hmm. You're not, you don't work for them, you yeah. work with them and you need to and have that self-respect. Exactly. it reduces your sir or status. It doesn't yeah. work, so mm -hmm. I call people by their first name. Mm -hmm. Um, unless I can't pronounce it, and then mm. I call them sir. Um, but yeah, so it's it's it's, it's important that you set the tone. You do not mm. work for people, mm. except for your bosses. But even then, mm. we are in a commission-only role. You mm. you have that entrepreneurial side to go out there, and it's yeah. your business. Mm. Working in partnership with me, and my job is to give you all the best marketing, all the best sort of tips and tricks, and the training. Mm -hmm. We'll give you an amazing office to work from. We'll give you the support and a great atmosphere. But ultimately, when the push comes to shove, it's mm. down to you. Yeah. And you need to be the one that's willing to get off your ass and go out there and graft and make some money. Mm -mm. And what is the plan for EMB? Because you've got the title. It includes Middle East, but you've only got <laughs> Dubai. In, so is that I'm a clue? I'm not <laughs> allowed to talk about it too much. Um, I've got a, I've got an interview after this with Germany's biggest newspaper. And okay. uh, the, the, you the, better the, not give them the exclusive. <laughs> mm -hmm. The... the, 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 the the MO I've been saying of what I can and can't talk about is 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 quite long. <laughs> I think they're slightly concerned about me uh, getting it in front scattered, of them. But yeah. um, look, my title is Middle East. Mm -hmm. We're currently in Dubai. 
We do so much business in Abu Dhabi and Ras Al Khaimah already. That would be a natural thing for us to look at. Mm. And and yeah, as you said, my title's Middle East, so I won't I won't say too much. But there's some really, really, really exciting um, plans in in, in place. Mm. And and that and that's what I love about again uh, about the opportunities I got where I can learn. There's there's three entries to market for us. Mm. Could direct. We will like I'm owned by Germany. We're a direct yeah. business. Um, we can go to somewhere and we can set up our own. We could franchise, so we mm. can. We, we've got a huge franchise side of the business, mm. um, where we can look at certain areas, where maybe we probably wouldn't go there and set up direct mm. business. We could do that, or if there's already an established agency, um, but they want to become part of a global network, mm. um, we can do a JV effectively. Okay. In, in short, we don't quite call it that. Mm. So we're 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 open. We're we're multiple. Ways we're a business of, that loves yeah. doing business. Yeah. Like we we don't have a no attitude. We'll try and find the way. Mm. It's about the people, and they have to tick certain boxes. Obviously, we've got incredibly high standards, mm. and they need to be with the same level. At the same level. Not level. That's the wrong thing to say. But the same standards. Yeah. And the same expectations of themselves. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Okay. But yeah. It's exciting. All I'll say is there's some very very exciting uh, times, times ahead, and we've well, got some I mean, big you know, big people joining us as well, which is. Uh, it's going to be fun. Okay, well, just maybe think my about popularity might slightly uh, come up <laughs> in the in the real estate to buy real estate market. <laughs> okay, we we look forward to seeing that unfold, um, and we'd like to get as well some tips for home buyers from okay. you as well. So you're um, a big, you know, advocate for owning real estate. I do. You I know own it. my own property here. I own a couple of different assets here as well, mm -hmm. well properties here as well. Yeah, look, I think I think for me. Remember why you start doing it because mm. everyone, I think humans have this, less so in Dubai. And again, we talked, touched on it earlier, everyone's got a yes attitude here. Yeah. But even still, when you make that decision to buy, people will come up and say, why are you doing it? Why are you mm. doing it? Because they're not doing it. And people feel stronger in groups. Yeah. Like, I think that's a lot less so now. Um, you need to get uh, your facts first. Mm -hmm. Before you go out and start looking at properties, speak to a mortgage advisor. Mm -hmm. England of Volkers Finance coming soon. Yep. Um, and uh, get some impartial advice of what you can actually afford, mm -hmm. what entails. You, you'd be surprised some of the things you need to do. So very, very first thing, there's nothing worse because it's just sods law. It's always the same. The first property you see is the mm -hmm. one you fall in love with. Yeah. Then you're not ready, you lose it. Mm -hmm. You compare every property since to that then one, to yeah. that one. It's, and it's, it's the worst. So before you do anything, speak to your mortgage advisor. Mm -hmm. I would always say speak to your mortgage advisor. Uh, a mortgage advisor opposed to a bank because they're impartial, they mm. can give you all the best rates in the market. Um, the bigger banks out here don't necessarily give the best rates because they don't need to. Mm. Because they're so big on the retail side, their customers just automatically yeah. go to them. You bank with one bank, you you just would you just think it's easier. And in fact, I would go and say, do not get a mortgage with who you bank with. Yeah. I think there's a lot of pros and, and of, of not doing that. Mm -hmm. Again, speak to a mortgage advisor; they can um, mm -hmm. they can give you better information. So first thing, do that. And then, and then just 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 be brave. Remember, we're doing like rents are very very high at the moment. Mm -hmm. It does make a lot of sense. Do I think the real estate market is going to change up or down in the next mm -hmm. five years? Yeah, mm -hmm. I think it's going to get better because see it's softening potentially. Like, mm -hmm. but if you're here for five to ten years, mm -hmm. you're saving so much money by owning property. It's your asset. You can mm -hmm. upgrade it. I've been here for fifteen years, and for twelve of them, I, I rented. Mm -hmm. So. As a minimum, as a minimum, I've thrown away 1.5 million dirhams. Yeah, as a yeah. minimum, that's me mm -hmm. being conservative because I don't actually want to work it out because it makes me feel <laughs> sick. But as a minimum, that is mm -hmm. what I've just basically thrown away. If I bought a property back then, mm -hmm. well, firstly, <laughs> I would have made a lot of money because yeah. the market's gone up. Um, but yeah, it's it's having a home. If this is you're going to be here for a while, mm -hmm. um, obviously, a lot of landlords are looking at selling because the market's at a, a good point at the moment, having that disruption. So. Look, it's it's it's. But let it's a me great ask you: in that 15 years, that 1.5 million you spent, how many places did was how many places were you living in? I lived in uh, Marina when mm -hmm. I first got here, um, which was was great. Uh, I think I had a two bedroom in a relatively good tower. This is when I first got here, but mm -hmm. after I started doing some money, and we paid about 70,000 to give mm -hmm. some perspective on where the market was. Um, and then from there, I moved to the Palm, which mm -hmm. I loved. My wife hated it. Mm -hmm. I had a pool. I had like a. It's called. I think it's called the F types. Mm -hmm. But they got two only two bedrooms. They're like best part of three thousand square foot. We had a yeah. pool table and a dartboard. It's basically like a lad's uh, 
a lad's pad mm. and she hated it. Um, and then we got a dog and we moved to JVT. Mm -hmm. From JVT, I moved to Jebel Ali Village. Mm -hmm. um, and then they obviously kicked me out to bulldoze it. Uh, mm -hmm. And they're about to build this gorgeous complex. And then we moved to the ranches where right. I live. So I live in Arabian Ranches One okay. in Sahil. I own my property, it's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. If anyone wants to pay massively over the the average uh, the market price, I'll be more than happy to sell it. <laughs> Brilliant! But yeah. we're we're very happy. We're about to start the pool mm. and everything now. So mm -hmm. yeah. It's, okay, uh, it's but good. now now let's just go back to 15 years ago. Yep. Based on the advice that you're giving, had you bought that first marina apartment, mm -hmm. you'd still be there. You wouldn't have got to the part or got to taste living on the palm. Mm -hmm got to taste apartment versus villa life. Mm. It takes a good five years to know what you want, no, right? I moved in when I was 20, mm. right? So circumstances change a lot more at that age. Naturally, you're mm. young, you're mm -hmm. gonna, you're, you hopefully kids. you're gonna grow mm. uh, professionally mm -hmm. a lot. And you're gonna meet someone mm -hmm. if you haven't already, you're gonna have kids, you're mm. gonna do all these things. So you change, but what I'm seeing now is a lot of people are moving from Europe. Like there's so many people coming over here now and they already, they've got their wife and their kids and they've mm -hmm. got their good job. Mm -hmm. Their circumstances, unless something drastic happens, yeah. for good or bad, are not gonna change. Yeah. So for them, it makes sense. You move to the ranches, mm -hmm. happy wife, happy life. Mm -hmm. Like you wanna live where the school is mm -hmm. and you want them to be able to get to and from school as quickly and as easy as possible. Yeah. Generally speaking, when you move somewhere, mm -hmm. you're gonna stay within a five, kilometer radius of yeah. where that is because that's where your life becomes mm -hmm. um and you're not going to change so much but even still like if i'd have bought that property in 2010 it probably would have doubled in price by 2012 i would have sold it i'd have yeah. bought something new etc etc so yeah. things will always do i mean look there's an argument you should never sell and you should mm -hmm. always hold because yeah. again i would have probably made 1.5 million mm -hmm. from that property had i rent bought mm -hmm. it and rented it out over the last 10 years mm -hmm. so there's pros and cons for for, mm -hmm. for for everyone. But I think there's certain things that are essential in life and your home is, is one. It's one of them, yeah. Your and home is your peace. It's like, where you find, you can relax and yeah. be yourself. And it's so, so important. And I don't think, I didn't realize it, but until you actually own that property, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, a, it's a different level of just yeah. relaxation. Slightly and, more concerning when things go wrong. But, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you, and you must get this question all the time. Is that, is it a good time to buy now? Shall I wait? Shall I wait? And I like I always just say, I'd be interested to know what you say, but I always just say, look, the value of the property only matters at two points. And you buy and sell. That's it. Yeah. Like so, if if when you you know the, doesn't ma you're not going to be tracking the value of your property every month. No, okay. Unless you you're a psycho like me, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to tap out, but um, no. Do you know what? I'm in a very I'm a very unique situation. So just look at me personally, and everyone in my industry that owns property my job is real estate mm. so if there's a drastic change in market conditions mm -hmm. which i don't think is going to happen um because again we're registering more buyers month on month than we mm. did last year which was a record year so mm -hmm. but if, if something drastic was to change my income's going to change yeah. so my biggest asset is um is my house mm -hmm. like so it, i'm so heavily sort of loaded not, on not Dubai the, real not estate. Not the yacht in uh, Marina. Not the blow up yacht in, in the <laughs> Marina, no. Um, but it's, 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 it, everything is, is, is linked to this one thing. Mm. Now, if I was a uh, senior director or manager director of HSBC, mm. does it matter if the market changes? Mm. Less, of course it does. Real estate is a huge part mm. of our way of life in, in the Middle East, uh, sorry, in the UAE. Mm. But it, it's less sort of resilient. If the market mm. drops 10%, it doesn't really matter because I'm still getting paid mm. in my, in my a proper job <laughs> <laughs> um but it's everything is on is on black for me my mm -hmm. wife's company is is real estate mm -hmm. my whole income is is real estate related my biggest asset so it is slightly different for me i need to be a little bit more careful i've got two kids i need to be mm -hmm. slightly more but at the same time if i was to sell it what am i going to do yeah to go and get the same quality house rent something mm -hmm. for half a million dirhams yeah. a year it's just yeah. it's it's there is never a good time to buy and there's mm -hmm. never a good time to sell. Mm -hmm. um, I completely agree with that. It's slightly more specifically important to me because mm -hmm. of my position, mm -hmm. but you're hundred percent right. Mm -hmm. um, what happens between now and then, it, it doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Um, and what you're paying off your mortgage every year, for example, mm -hmm. you'd pay more than that in rent or yeah. the same in rent. So yeah. it's, it's six and one half dozen the other. Yeah. Okay, there you go. That's your advice for homeowners. Right, now, nah, or home buyers. Um, also, the other big tip is obviously make sure you use Engel and Volkers for any purchasing <laughs> needs. That wasn't a plug or anything. <laughs> you better, you, you, 
you on Instagram is going to be an absolute nightmare. Uh, Diana, don't let him on it. <laughs> or take his password yeah. and you control it. I am trying to find someone. If someone wants to come and be my ghost social, social media, media person, by all means do it. Right. Um, uh, uh, who do you. they contact? We'll put, the, we'll uh, yeah, put his put Instagram name. handle down yeah, below. Right here. Um, all right. So we told Instagram you were coming. You reactivated your Instagram yeah. to reshare that story. Yeah. And boy, did I get some responses. I need to apologize. I, I am a working guy from Staines upon Thames. <laughs> you've got some, name after the you've got some riff So I really, really <laughs> apologize for what my very, very small network of probably about 100 people have said. I'm sure I've got 100 people followers, friends, whatever it's called. <laughs> yeah. And you've probably got a hundred messages <laughs> and they're all well, really we'll degrading. So we'll I'm trusting out, you here not to completely we'll throw you under the bus. We'll pick out the, um, appropriate, the, one, the ones. appropriate ones. <laughs> uh, right, so this is clearly your good friend, Chris. How much of an important role did your good friend, Chris, play in your success? Which Chris? There's a few. CJ, CJM. No, that's Callum. That's my trait. That's my personal trainer. I have to actually give a Wait, little shout out. How many personal trainers do you have? One, Callum, CR, CRJ. No, that's Callum Rose yeah, yeah, yeah. Fitness. There's CGM, CFC. Oh, God. Who's that? Chris. 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 <laughs> Chris is a, a, one of my best friends. He's a very good friend of mine. He's also a big Chelsea supporter. Uh, he lives in Thailand. Um, he's a very successful entrepreneur in, in a multitude of different things. Um, he had, I'd say, zero to no input and, and uh, in your positivity success. in my, my success. Excellent. Um, do you know what? All, jo all jokes aside, there's certain people that come in my life and they, they show me constantly the same message. I always find entrepreneurs have the same underlying message, like, rules and i'm not saying to break rules just so i'm clear but everything that was created even down to like where this line is the difference between canada and america like mm -hmm. everything was created by people the same as you and i mm -hmm. and when you get your head around that mm. it gives you like this newfound confidence well if they could have done that then there's no reason why i can't and he he is one of them he is the same attitude of don't take no for an answer. Mm -hmm. Anything is a possibility. Mm -hmm. They will naturally make mistakes because you, when you, when you are just going out there and mm -hmm. doing rather than talking, you do make them. Um, he's a very yeah dear friend of mine. Yeah, um, color outside the lines kind of guy. Just do uh, it. Yeah. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. the very polite way of putting okay. it. Yes. <laughs> right. yes, 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 yes. Um, we've got two questions from Tom Dainty, oh, who God. was all right. Who has agreed more deals in their career, Rick Wayne or Dan Hardy? <laughs> Is that an in joke? Um, yeah, I don't. I don't think I need to answer that question. I think. I the think question we all know. Itself. I think we all know. There's only one big dog in town. <laughs> okay. And does that big dog? Does Dan know all the names of the names of all of his brokers? Is that another in joke? That is an in joke. Mm -hmm. um, I do know the name of all of. Uh, my brokers, yes. Mm -hmm. I actually, one thing I loved about Linda, um, she knew the name of every single person and we'd have a little competition and we'd go around and be like, mm -hmm. who can who can, uh, who, who can know Identify, the name? And I, yeah. I make it a priority of mine to make sure everyone knows who I am. I, to mm -hmm. my, I actually need to learn, this is, this is a key skill that someone taught me recently, I need to be more detracted. I cannot, you cannot make helicopter decisions and big plans being so in the mix and I'm, mm -hmm. I give my, I'm, I'm too open to everyone. People will just walk into my office and ask yeah. me questions. I need to have a slightly Boundaries. bigger, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, but no, I do, but thank you very much, Tom. Okay. Um, do you know everyone's <laughs> name in your team? That's the real question. <laughs> and then your fitness coach, Callum, do you think your successes over the last few years is down to your amazing coach? Isn't it great? Everyone talks about my successes and <laughs> now they try and claim riot. it. Yeah, everyone I have riot. to give him a shout out. CRJ Fitness, Callum, he's become a friend of mine. As I said at the beginning of this, it takes a certain person to tell me what to do. Mm -hmm. um, I started working about two years ago. I had quite serious back surgery in, in between that as well. So he's got me, I think we've lost, I lost 35 kilos in two years, yeah. which is impressive. Still got mm -hmm. some way to go. Mm -hmm. Very aware of that. Um, but no, he's um, he's one of the few people that has got through to me and, mm -hmm. and he's taught me a lot. But yeah, he's a, he's a good guy. So if anyone, he tends to deal with more difficult P 
people like myself. So if you are in that category yeah. and you want to want to get in shape, um, he's okay. uh, he's a good guy, and he's one of us. He's he's not a complete robot. He knows how to have some fun. <laughs> um, and this question might be from your favorite ex boss, <laughs> who's asking, "Who's your favorite ex boss?" Which one? <laughs> Got You've got many. to answer it and I'll tell you. Who's my favourite ex-boss? I don't think I've ever had a boss. I think I'm my only... I think I'm pretty... Uh... Who would ask that question? Well, there's only two people that could claim it. It'd either be Pete Calamari mm -hmm. or... I, I dare not say his name, yeah. Richard Wayne. Out of the two, who's your favourite? Neither. I think they're both fair. <laughs> it was Rick Wayne was that asked Rick. the question. Yeah, uh, Ryan Mahoney, 100% was my favourite <laughs> boss. And Linda. Um, and here's one from Cool. What was the motivation to come to Dubai? I think I said it earlier. I think I think I realised I was what, 19 years old, driving a nice car, earning good money, mm. had my own place at that time. And I sort of sat there. All my friends went into education and, and went on to do some stuff. A lot of them actually are, are tradespeople, as I said, and they knew what they wanted to be. And I sort of, I didn't wake up and say, I want to be an estate agent. Mm. It's what I come to and I was very, very good at it. But I realized maybe if I went uptown, like up to London, mm. um, I could have earned good money. But mm. getting on that train, that traffic. Miserable, was, yeah. Like the hours were uh, 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. at mm. times, as you will know. Mm. They were our unofficial hours mm. with lunch break. If you dare take a lunch break, <laughs> You'd be scolded. That's why everyone was the smoker. Because I didn't the only smoke. Way that Do you know what? It's the one thing. Mm. It's the one vice that's never gripped me. I'm well not a done. smoker. Um, but yeah, so I really think I I reached what I wanted to reach being a UK state agent, and I knew I had to do something. Mm -hmm. And everyone was talking about Dubai, Dubai, Dubai. Little did I know they were talking about Dubai in 2008. Mm. Not, this is 2009. They're talking about the previous year yeah. before the, 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 the global crash mm. and how amazing it was. And but it was the right decision. Like I said, there's been a lot of highs, many, many lows, but it's, it's been great. It's led to, to this moment. Yeah, there we go. And lastly, and this turns out it was a question. Well, I knew that your wife was in conveyancing. Yes. So I suspected it was her. How did he get so goddamn good looking? And then I thought... <laughs> That's 100% her. Um, <laughs> and then I thought, mm, do you want me to report this phone <laughs> stolen? <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, that was me. There's no hiding from so it. So you're, you're and how Mrs. I got this goddamn... Unfortunately, guys, there is no secret. I am just this good looking. <laughs> you, you can't do anything. You can try and get a little bit fitter. Um, maybe get your teeth sorted out, but apart from that, you, you, I am who I am. Yeah, and it must be handy my having half Palestinian Lebanese roots come through <laughs> my Mediterranean skin. There we go. Everyone in the room, just for clarification, <laughs> is just giving a, 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 a fist pump. This might make this must make life quite easy having your missus in conveyancing. It is. I mean, I we we have very we used to work we worked together for ten years, mm -hmm. um, we, which was. Uh, which was interesting and, and fun. And when it was good, it was good. When it was difficult, it was extremely difficult because mm. you've obviously got that, that pressure at home and, and at work. Um, but now we, we have completely separate lives. She's mm. gone on. I'm extremely proud of what she's done. She set up a business completely separate away from me. She looks after a lot of the, the bigger guys. I had to sack her at Engel & Volkers. She used to do the conveyancing mm -hmm. at Engel & Volkers, but I had to unfortunately sack her because it's a conflict of interest. Um, but yeah, she's oh, gone yeah. from strength okay. to strength mm. to strength. And we've set up our own one in, mm -hmm. in, in house now um, because there's no one as good as her in the market. So I had to try and do it myself. There you go. Aww. Nice little touch. But no, I'm incredibly proud of what she's yeah. achieved. And yeah, her and her, her partner are doing uh, incredibly well. Okay, brilliant. And it does make, I'll be honest, agents. How much been, advice do you get from her? Mm. I, 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 yeah, I dare, too, too just, much to say. She, uh, she must have some stories as well. They must see Yeah, of mm, course. Mm. She's got a cracking story about mm. one of her first deals she, she conveyanced when we were at SPAS together. Mm. Um, agents that do their own conveyancing are, are so short-minded. Of course, you need to be there. You want to wish mm. them luck and get going to the transfer. Um, certain clients you have to be super involved with, but it takes so much of your time. Mm. Salespeople are good at selling. Yeah. They're not good at admin yeah. and the paperwork. I'm the most short tempered. I get so frustrated. I can't be dealing with banks yeah. and, and all that. I, I, I'm good at what I do. Mm -hmm. And I think I think that's what one of the key things I've taken into Engler Volkers is I know what I'm good at, but equally I'm confident enough to know what I'm not good at. Yeah. And I, 
I always try Her and be the stupidest person in the room, mm-hmm. at whatever given subject. Mm-hmm. Buying real estate, I know my stuff. Like, mm-hmm. I, I do. That's I know people and I know to buy real estate. Mm-hmm. So I've just hired an amazing like CIO who's come board, he's extremely successful, and he's mm-hmm. like, no, you, you don't do things like that. You've got to do it this way. And he's mm-hmm. putting more structure in, which is great because I can trust him to go and do it. I've got a, a really super strong uh, CFO mm-hmm. in, in Dubai, and he takes care of that side. And and what I realized very quickly is what I'm good at and what I'm not good at. And yeah. what I'm not good at, go and get the best and mm-hmm. be confident enough to go and do that. Yeah. I like what you said, try and be the stupidest Always person. Always be the stupidest person in the room. Then you're learning. When yeah. you're the most cleverest person in the room, you get too confident yeah. um, and you, you stop learning. Yeah. Genuinely. And I think choose, that's a dangerous choose your category. Circles. Choose your circles. Yeah. Okay. And lastly, we're going to wrap it up with um, some words of wisdom for real estate agents. Yeah. So we start with get how to get started, how to get noticed, how to get results, how to get referred by Daniel Hardy. I was nearly going to call you Tom, Tom again there. Right, so Tom. what's I'm your advice? <laughs> what's your advice for anyone looking to get started in real estate? Okay, first thing I'll say before we get started, you need to get accustomed with a couple of things. Nobody cares about you. Mm-hmm. Zero. Mm-hmm. Nobody cares in a good way and a bad way. If you want to be that social media person, I need to get this into my head, so I'm learning myself here. Nobody cares, bar like a very small group of people. Mm. And if they're watching you, they're not looking after themselves. Mm-hmm. Nobody cares. People don't care that a deal fell out of bed. People don't care that something's not gone your way. Mm-hmm. Life isn't fair. Mm-hmm. They're the two biggest things. Nobody cares and life isn't fair. Mm-hmm. Once you get really comfortable with them Thanks two Thanks for that little pep life, talk. <laughs> no, but it is. But yeah. once you get comfortable with that, 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 them two, them two um, statements, things become a lot easier mm. because you have to care about yourself. Mm. You really have to go out there. Things don't go your way sometimes. Tough. I lost eight kilos this year in mm. two months and it took me two weeks to put four kilos back, back on. on. <laughs> that's, that's life. Mm. Life isn't fair. Mm. Um, and you cannot feel sorry for yourself. If you do, you cannot deal with the pressures of, of this commission-only mm-hmm. environment. Mm-hmm. You have to be a certain mindset. So if you are that person that is always the victim, that always feels sorry for himself, mm. do Don't not come bother. to the real estate and mm. do not come to to this commission only environment. That's mm-hmm. my first tip. Once you are here, I said it earlier, hard work beats talent every day of the week. There is yeah. zero shortcuts. The shortcuts are, actually there is some shortcuts. <laughs> Speak to the people that are doing well, learn from them and, and see what they're doing. Don't be afraid to ask for advice and opinions and people, good people will give you good advice. Mm-hmm. But again, there is no shortcuts. You're gonna have to make lots and lots of calls. You're gonna have to pound the streets. Mm-hmm. You're really gonna have to go out there um, and and learn, and that's the only way of getting good. Mm-hmm. Um, I know I'm this really cool, sexy character on here, but I'm a bit of a geek. Like all of my areas that I used to cover, I had a cheat sheet. I had the types, what, how many bedrooms, the size, and I'd go home and I would like do revision Stadia. almost mm-hmm. because it was so important to me to to learn that because buyers will know the difference and you need to know that. Mm-hmm. So my my overriding advice is you need to work incredibly hard. You're gonna have to make a lot of calls. Um, and just do what you say you're going to do. Mm. And you, you do that, you're already going to be ahead of the market. Yeah. All the other little tips and tricks, the inside bits and bobs, mm-hmm. you're going to have to come work at England Volkers and I can teach you, uh, <laughs> I can teach oh, you the intricacies. Um, but genuinely, it's it's people that work hard will be successful. Yeah. We're in a very, we're in an amazing place in an amazing industry. If you just work hard, mm-hmm. you're going to do well. Okay. For the, for the, to get to the elite, again, you're going to mm-hmm. have to come and buy me a, a glass of water. <laughs> a glass of water, yeah. right. And um, actually, you're probably a really good person to ask this question because you're not into the whole social media thing yet. And yet you I will still never be, just for clarity. <laughs> yeah. And yet you still managed to get yourself noticed by the right people. Yeah. So whether that was a headhunter, whether it was that guy who ended up buying up um, yeah. in um, s- s- uh, your first couple yeah, of yeah, sales. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So what's your advice to people who want to get noticed but don't want to, and not really that present on social media. In real estate terms, it's listings. I would honestly spend 60% of your time trying to get listings. There's loads of buyers out there. We've got more buyers than we can shake a stick at. Mm -hmm. Getting good quality stock that is well-priced and not cheap, but I mean like correctly priced Mm -hmm. is the challenge. That is our biggest issue at the moment. Mm -hmm. Um, And if if you go out there and just concentrate on that, People will know you. Dubai is a small place. You can mm. connect with anyone. You sell on one street, everyone will know you've done that. Yeah. Um, and look, I don't like social media. I'm not the biggest fan of it. But I had confidence. So 
people say don't put your for sale sign up because right. then people will know that house people are not brave enough to put their for sale signs up because right. they think you're you're putting a, a target on it for people to tout that yeah. good agents can find any property right. genuinely it's, it's so easy um, again, I'm not going to go into mm. it to, to work out which property is which. Mm -hmm. Be brave. Put your for sale sign up, but more importantly, put your sold sign up. Mm -hmm. You need to put your templates in place. Your your your. I'm not naturally the most organised person, so I'm mm. super structured. I know what I'm going to do at any given moment, and if I do that, I trust the process, and things mm. will come good. They'll work. Mm. So many times, people will be successful, and then they go right. I'm going to change and do this. Mm -hmm. it's like, well, no, if you just keep if it works, right? Yeah. Don't don't mm. change. Add mm -hmm. like evolve. Of course, mm. of course, you you, you want to go maybe from selling the springs to Emirates Hills, but don't sell five houses and go right. That's it. Mm. It, it doesn't work like that. Mm. You you've got to be you've got to be aggressive. And it's good to be impatient, but you've got to be realistic at the same mm -hmm. time. Okay. Well, that kind of, that answers how to get results as well, which was the, yep. was the third thing. Yep. And lastly, how to get referred. Do a good job. Mm -hmm. Honestly, everyone likes having a person in this town. They like to have a lawyer. They mm -hmm. like to have a dentist, like to have a doctor, and they like to have a real estate agent. Yeah. If you do a good job and you don't even need to transact with a person, mm -hmm. you will get referred time and time again. The amount of people call and say, hey, so-and-so is giving you your number. Mm -hmm. Um, even now to this day, and I go, I wish I could still sell with, mm. with, with the market the way it is, mm. um, and the, the, it gets passed on to my guys. But um, if you do a good job and you do what you say you're going to do, and I'm not saying you have to be their best friend, yeah. and I'm not saying you have to be yes, so, no, sir. Mm. People are entrusting you to do a service. The amount of arguments I've had with clients, but they respect me for it. You need to stand your ground. Mm. Ultimately, you don't go into your dentist and say, I need a root canal yeah. on X, Y. Like yeah. you don't go to your doctor and say, this is, mm. you, you are the expert and people need to trust you. And if you don't have that aura about you, people won't give it to you. So yeah. people, why people want to work with me is because I'll set the tone. Mm. I'll tell them what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And even when it comes to making an offer, I say, this is what we're going to offer. Mm. And this is what I think we'll get it agreed at. Yeah. Um, and it's about, it's about owning the, uh, owning the space. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Oh, what a fantastic episode. Thank you very much. I Hopefully think we I'm got away waffled. with it. I think... Um, Anything else you want to ask me off the record or on it, the record? On the record, is there any question you wish I'd have asked you? Um, you asked me how I got so good looking. So that's a check. <laughs> Everyone keeps talking about my successes and I've not had to, so that's, <laughs> yeah. a, that's a check. No, I don't think so. I think it's, mm -hmm. been, a, it's been a great chat. If anyone does want to ask me any questions that have not come up, by all means. Add him on add, Instagram. I'll open myself up. Open I'll do that. Up. I'll get okay. Deanna to do that. Slide up in his DMs then. I don't know what that means, but <laughs> I'm sure that's not. It sounds a little bit, <laughs> but I am married, just so we're clear. Um, and, uh, and yeah, feel free to reach out. I'm a pretty approachable person. Mm -hmm. I'm a very honest person. I've tried to be more mm. PR, yeah. fied. But, it's got, but he's a morning person, so I'm a morning we had person. to come in at get like 7 a.m. Exactly. to do this. Exactly, we're here. In the afternoon, he's... I'm busy, uh, man. I've told you, I've got a call. I've got a, I've got an interview after this with Germany's yeah, largest yeah. newspaper. Um, so, Look yeah, it's, it's a it's a busy day. And then well, I've got my brother's boxing event tonight, his, his big one at Burj Khalifa. So, to Dom. Yeah, it's, mm. a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really busy oh. day. But, no, I think it's been great fun. Yeah. This is my first podcast. Congratulations. You, Thank you. you. <laughs> one of the only people that... Shoehorn me out of my, <laughs> my dark corner. Yeah. Uh, but no, it's been been great fun. But anyone wants to reach out, by all means, uh, do it. Sorry if I offend anyone. Not that sorry, don't really care. Uh, but no, it's been uh, it's been great. The Thank you very the much. The boy from Staines done good. If you want my honest opinion about anyone, again, feel free to shout. <laughs> um, yeah. Brilliant. Thank you so much. No problem. We'll leave Thank it you. There. You will. You are watching the clean version of. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there was probably another twenty minutes that we had to cut out, but yeah. Thank you very much. Maybe I'll put the um, the outcuts in uh, my school community. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. That's American, so we might be able to get away with that. Do what you want. So. Do what you want. No <laughs> right. problem whatsoever. Lovely. Thank you very much. Like, share, and subscribe. See you later.